I have to take a deep breath before this video. Good morning, everybody. This video has been a long time coming. And I'll just cut to the chase. Yes, I do think that AI is going to completely replace radiologists. And I'm actually thinking about quitting radiology altogether because of this new insight. So I can't even say that seriously. No, okay. Obviously, that was not true. I mean, I don't think I'm that great of an actor, so obviously you could probably figure that out from the beginning. No. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Yasha. I'm a radiologist, if you're new to my channel. And I'm here to tell you that, unfortunately, contrary to this popular belief that AI is going to replace radiologists, AI is not going to replace radiologists. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, I'm going to start with the most cliche answer, and that is that Radiology is not black and white. Now, yes, ha ha ha, we all know that that's like the biggest cliche in radiology or in medicine even, but it's true, okay, it's true. This is especially true in chest x-rays or any sort of plain film, radiograph, x-ray, they, they all mean the same thing, because those are actually the hardest type of imaging to read, the most difficult. If you ask any radiologist what they're most afraid of, you think they might say MRI? No, the answer is an x-ray. In fact, the chest x-ray is probably the hardest exam that we read. And if you ask like 10 radiologists um, what something is on a chest x-ray, you probably will get a variety of responses like atelectasis, pneumonia, cancer. And in different situations, every single person is gonna be right because there are some times you literally cannot tell the difference between those diagnoses on an x-ray. Even on a CT scan sometimes, you will be surprised that something turns out to be an infection when it really looks like it could be cancer, or vice versa, right? Something looks like it could just be an infection and then it doesn't resolve and it ends up being cancer. So radiology is not easy. Um, it's very nuanced. It, we use a lot of clinical information when we are making our diagnosis. And I do not think that AI is at the level that it needs to be. And it's not that I don't think that AI is at the level. AI is not ready for that sort of prime time yet where it's ready to just make diagnoses. Which brings me to point number two, which is AI is not just used for clinical diagnosis. And it's a common misconception that you just throw data and you throw images at an AI algorithm and you're going to get your answer. That is not how it works. Each AI algorithm is really just made for one thing. So think of it like a yes or no question, right? Like, does this x-ray have pneumonia, yes or no? That doesn't rule out any of the other things that a chest x-ray can have on it. It's just a one like black or white question. I'm not saying that AI cannot evolve and start to answer more than one question, but as of right now, each algorithm really does one thing well. And well, why is that? If you think about how you train an AI algorithm. And if you're in radiology, you probably already have some sort of idea of like how this works or if you're in data science, but if you are totally new to this idea, the way that you train an AI algorithm is that you have to feed it a data set, a very specific data set. Um, and that's how an algorithm learns. You have to create a data set that answers a specific question and that specific question can be utilized in clinical practice, right? So. You can't just say like find everything wrong with the CT scan and AI will not, it, it just, at this point in time, it's not gonna work that way. Maybe in 20 years that will be true, but as of right now, that's not how it works. Contrary to radiologists who you do throw a bunch of images at and you say find every diagnosis and then that's what we do, right? So there's a little bit of a difference between what AI is capable of and what radiologists do. But as I was saying, um, AI is not just used for clinical diagnosis. So AI actually helps radiologists and other types of physicians outside of just clinically diagnosing a patient. So while clinical diagnosis is like a big part of what we do, AI really helps us in a hundred other ways. And I think all of these other ways that AI helps us are really the way that we wish and we hope that AI is more implemented in our workflow. What do I mean by that? that? That's just a bunch of words. I think to really understand the other uses of AI, you have to understand what a radiologist really does when they come to work. So every day we come to work, we sit at our computer and we power up our software, right? That helps us read studies. Well, in some places you might have like a hundred studies waiting for you. And that's not an exaggeration. That's how many you might have waiting for you. Um, so how do you prioritize where you start? Do you just start at the top of the list? 
uh, person who got the image first is the first person that you read? Or is it based on, you know, severity? Like, oh, this one was ordered as stat and this one was not ordered as stat. Is that how you start to read? Um, and if you're in medicine, you know that a lot of things are ordered as stat. So that might not really help you very much. Um, or do you maybe want to see what patient has the most acute symptoms? Or what patient really has something going on in their study? Well, this is actually a place where AI is starting to work. They can actually identify patients with really like, you know, brain hemorrhage or uh, patients with a positive pulmonary embolism scan and bring those to the top of your list. I think most radiologists would welcome this change in their workflow because we all want to prioritize helping the patients that need it the most, right? That, that's what we want to prioritize. It's like when you go to the ER for a paper cut, versus someone who has like, a, I don't know, a heart attack. You want the patient with a heart attack to be triaged to the front. That's really how it works. It's not the patient that has been there the longest or who's waiting because those are usually the healthiest patients that are waiting, right? So similarly, it would be great if we could do that in our radiology workflow. So that is one place where AI can help us. AI can also help us create our reports. So it makes us more efficient, helps us create more accurate reports. There are also applications for AI that help us with clinical decision making. So for example, there are a lot of breast masses that end up being in between, like they don't look like they are necessarily benign, but they don't necessarily look like they could be 100% cancer. And so you're kind of towing the line between, do I want to biopsy something or do I want to just continue following it for this patient? And there are applications that can help us make that decision. Um, you just like circle the lesion and you're like biopsy or follow. And it kind of tells you where your suspicion should be. I just want to tell everybody that just because there are almost 400 um, algorithms being cleared by the FDA or like being shown to the FDA, that does not mean that those are 400 ways that AI is going to take our job. That is just simply not the case. Since we are talking about the FDA now, I thought it would be a good time to talk about FDA cleared versus FDA approved and how F the FDA really regulates AI. I don't know all the specifics. I have just been reading about it. I am not an AI expert, but I am a radiology expert and I can tell you a little bit about what I've learned. In the most simple sense, FDA clear just means that something has undergone a little bit of testing and it's equivalent to something else that's already on the market versus FDA approved is something that has gone through rigorous clinical testing and has basically achieved the stamp of approval by the FDA saying that this is like safe. Most of the AI algorithms are not FDA approved. They are FDA cleared, meaning that they are equivalent to something else that's already on the market and they have not gone through the rigorous FDA approval testing yet. So for everyone who comments on the videos saying that, oh, well, all these things are FDA approved, that's not true. Um, things are FDA cleared, but they're not FDA approved. And those are not the same thing. They're not synonyms. The next thing that's very interesting is, well, what makes AI smarter? What is machine learning? AI algorithms and machine learning, I mean, essentially they get smarter by seeing more data. That's what makes them so strong, right? It's just like a human. Like I, you know, as a first year resident, you don't, haven't seen as much and you're not as smart. And then fourth year, you've seen like thousands and thousands of images and now you're like way smarter. That's the same for AI. The issue that's happening right now with AI is that once you submit your AI algorithm for FDA clearance, it cannot be changed, period which really goes against how AI learns, right? AI learns by getting more data and then it gets stronger and more robust. But as of right now, once you submit your algorithm, it cannot be changed. Otherwise you will lose that FDA clearance. So you'll have to undergo another round of testing and everything for it to be FDA cleared. So that's a major roadblock as of right now uh, for getting things FDA approved or even FDA cleared and a major roadblock for improving AI systems. I want to talk a little bit about the things that radiologists do that are not replaceable by AI. One of them is just in-person consults. You may not know this, but your doctor probably has come to the reading room to review images with radiologists before. And it's just not going to be the same if AI is re reading 100% of your imaging. A lot of doctors don't understand what we're saying in our reports because radiology is kind of a totally different language. and while a lot of the newer radiologists are trying to kind of bridge that gap and make things a lot more readable, especially as patients are reading more and more of our reports, there are still some things that people have questions about. It's, it's perfectly natural. You read a textbook and you have questions, right? So similarly, if you read a radiology report, your doctor might have questions. Or maybe your doctor talked to you, the patient, in the meantime and learn something new about you know your symptoms. They might come to us with that additional piece of history and say like, oh, well, you know, do you still think that this 
could be pneumonia if the patient has lost 20 pounds over the last 10 days or something crazy like that. No, right? Obviously not. And then I would, I would say, oh, in that clinical history, I'd probably worry more about a malignancy. Right? I'd worry about cancer. Um, these types of things are very important to radiology. And I personally believe that our relationship with our providers and doctors really strengthens like what we do as clinicians. We are a resource to people who may not understand what we're saying. And I really believe that there is no way that AI can 100% replace this, um, this part of our specialty because we really do a lot of consultation on a daily basis. Literally every day we get phone calls, we get people coming down and I don't think that AI can take that part of our specialty away. And that's one of my favorite parts about our specialty is just that we do something so unique that people do come to us with questions and I love that. So. That's really one of the major reasons why I don't think AI can completely replace radiologists. We also do contribute to patient care. Believe it or not, we are at Tumor Board. In fact, we are like probably the mainstay. We are always there. Radiology pretty much 100% has to be there. If you are doing any sort of Tumor Board or any sort of case conference where you wanna show imaging, a radiologist is usually present. So we, we really play a big role in diagnosis and in treatment of patients. And people don't always realize that. So I think that that's another reason why AI cannot take our job. Something else you might not know about radiology is that we do a lot of procedures. Um, there's an entire field called interventional radiology that focuses on doing procedures, on treating patients, on doing a lot of image-guided procedures. I mean, that's the word. I, as a breast imager, also do procedures. I um, That's pretty, that's a big part of why I chose breast imaging because I enjoy that. I enjoy doing procedures. I enjoy working with my hands. I enjoy getting patients a diagnosis. So you really see the patient through from finding a lesion on their imaging, biopsying it, and sometimes even conveying those results to your patient. That is obviously not something that AI can do for me. So, so there's just yet another reason why AI cannot take our job. All right, we're getting there, people. We're getting to the end. Okay, now this last part. It could be controversial, and it's fine if it is, but this is my opinion. There is a major doctor shortage in America, in the US. Um, there are just not enough doctors to go around. People wait months to see certain types of doctors. Even your primary care doctor, you might have to wait. You make your appointments a year in advance, right? Like, we are scheduling patients out so far and it's creating a lot of doctor burnout. It's creating a lot of, I don't know, just moral injury um, within medicine because insurance companies are really pushing doctors to see more and more patients. One of the ways we have tried to combat this problem of doctor shortage in America is by using mid-levels, right? Um, uh, APPs, non-physician providers, Basically, I'm talking about PAs and NPs, right? Those providers are one of the ways that we bridge the gap for our patients and also for ourselves. We can't have one doctor seeing 50 patients in a day. That's just not doing, that's not fair to any of those patients. And it's also not fair to the doctor who's trying to do a good job and spend time with every patient. And then end up, you know, we end up getting bad reviews because we're not spending enough time with each patient each patient and then we have these emails in our inbox saying that you're not producing you know as much and that's what they call it productivity your productivity is low and obviously those physicians are going to feel burnt out you feel like you're being pushed and squeezed in every way and all you want to do is do a good job for the patient so this is where a lot of mid-levels come in APPs and PPs um, they help bridge that gap for a lot of doctors now, you're probably wondering, like, where is she going with this? Well, as of right now, there aren't that many mid-levels in radiology. As a whole, um, I think anesthesia, emergency medicine, primary care, those fields have much more heavily utilized mid-level providers, NPPs, APPs, than radiology, right? Like, the radiology is somewhat protected in the sense that what we do is very, very unique, very, very specialized, and you really do have to go to go through a ton of training to understand what we do. Um, not to say it's not possible, but this is where I see AI helping us a lot. You may not know this, but there is a massive shortage of radiologists in the US, just like 
a lot of other fields, but right now it's really in radiology because imaging is booming, especially with the addition of um, so many mid-level providers in radiology, or sorry, in um, healthcare. There's a, there are papers that show that they just order more imaging. And so what used to be like a few CT scans per day, now it's like trying to fill every 20 minute slot starting from like 7 a.m. We open our imaging centers earlier and earlier. We keep them open later and later. We have to have more and more radiologists. Well, unfortunately, the number of radiology spots has not significantly increased. We're not producing more radiologists every year. So uh, yeah, I think that this is a place where AI can help us because AI can make us more efficient it can sort of take the fluff out of a lot of what we do, if it can start to generate reports for us, if AI can actually triage our patients and bring those with acute problems to the top of our list and save our negatives for later, even just like writing a negative report, right? I mean, there are so many things that AI can really do for us. And if you talk to a radiologist, in fact, you're talking to one now, hi, um, you would hear that these frustrations are common among us. Like everyone wants the same thing. We want AI to help us. No one is against AI and radiology, and we all want AI to really help us and make our workflow a lot better because we are struggling as radiologists to keep up with the volume. Everyone is hiring, um, everyone is trying to get more radiologists on board, and there just aren't enough of us to go around. So I really think that this is one of the ways that AI can help us, and I hope that it leads to less burnout in radiology. I hope that it leads to more fulfillment in medicine. And contrary to popular belief, no, I still don't think that AI is going to replace radiologists. I think that we are in a great place. I think it's actually really exciting. If you are interested in machine learning and AI, I think radiology is the place to be because we're going to implement it and like first, essentially. And uh, yeah, I just, this was a very passionate video, okay? The last thing I'm gonna say is if you really are worried about AI taking over radiology, A, don't go into radiology, but B, by the time that AI really takes over radiology, it's going to have taken over a lot of other specialties already. So if you are not going into radiology because of AI, I would say don't go into medicine at all because by the time it takes over one of us, it's going to be at the level to take over all of us. So. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you finished your cup of coffee, unlike me, who's still working on it. And I will catch you in my next video. Bye.